Hi, my name is Mark Bennett. I'm a software developer with Burma Studio, and I'm here to talk to you about why I'm excited about developing ECMAScript 6. As many of you may know, when it comes time to deploy and maintain large-scale JavaScript applications, there can be many challenges. There have been many attempts to fix JavaScript in the past, most of these taking the form of new languages which compile to JavaScript. Unfortunately, many of these have failed to gain traction, mainly because JavaScript is too successful to replace. It's too broadly supported in existing browsers and applications, and replacing it requires buy-in from too many different parties. So this begs the question, why not just fix JavaScript? And essentially, that's what ES6 attempts to do. It's the first new revision of JavaScript in five years, and it introduces many new features in a way that attempts to do as many new things without breaking backwards compatibility when possible. As well, it's supported by many browsers with the eventual commitment to implement the features. In the meantime, there are transpilers like Babel.js allowing you to use many of the features now. ECMAScript 6 attempts to standardize existing practices already used by developers. It adds new syntax that isn't possible in ECMAScript 5 that most of us use now. And it expands the standard library, allowing you to reduce the amount of boilerplate code that you have to ship with your applications. Some examples of new features. The arrow function replaces the broader syntax that you see above, where you have to use the function keyword and the return, with the much shorter syntax where you simply use the arrow operator and the return is implied. And then another, another nice thing about the arrow syntax is that when it's created, it binds to the this associated with the binding time. What that means is that unlike using the function where you can end up with this accidentally being bound to the global window or global object, when you use the arrow, it binds to the value of this at the time you create the arrow. So as you can see here, if we add an event listener to a button, if we use the function keyword, it's going to bind to the global debuggy function, where as if we use the arrow operator, it's going to bind to the be good function associated with the object that we're using at the time. This is probably the behavior we want and can be a source of many confusing bugs in production. Another awesome feature of ECMAScript 6 is destructuring. Some of you may know this as pattern matching from other languages like Go or Ruby. Essentially, what it lets you do is go and take an object, decompose it into individual values, and then assign those values to new objects. So in the first case here, I'm taking an object with fields for x and y, and using them to create new, two new variables for x and y. In cases like this, where the names of the variables are the same as the names of the fields, you can actually go and drop the field name. So the field name is actually implied from the name of the object. You can also use destructuring with arrays, where you go and select specific values from an array. You can use commas, as many as you want, to skip through values you don't care about in an array. And you can use the three dot operator called an ellipsis to select the remainder. So in this case, we're going to discard hola, select hello and place it into A, and then select the remainder, so bonjour and hello, and place it into B. You can also assign objects default values. So in this case, I'm assigning C, 
the value of default. And because C is not in the object I'm assigning from, C will have the value default. This introduces some awesome options for handling things like options which are passed into functions. In this case, I'm defining be awesome and be a little evil, both with default values, and I'm then sending them from an options object that might be passed in from a function call. This is a lot quicker to do in ECMAScript 6 than it would be to do in something like ECMAScript 5, especially without a library like jQuery. Given the mixed feelings about classes, you may or may not be excited about this, but one of the nice things that ECMAScript 6 does is attempts to capture the semantics of popular class functions in different libraries and standardize them around a common syntax. The syntax is fairly straightforward and will look familiar to anyone who's used something like CoffeeScript. So in this case, you can create classes Classes can extend other classes, uh, and they'll also do things like define the proper super as well as properly setting things like constructors so that instance of will still work even when interacting with prototypical objects. Another awesome feature is the introduction of modules and imports. If you're familiar with things like npm or commonjs, or require JS, you may already be used to using something similar to this. But again, this simply captures an existing behavior in a standard with the idea that it will be more widely deployed and used. So the way they've been implemented in ECMAScript 6 is pretty simple. It uses an import and export keyword. In your library, you export functions, objects, or classes that you'd like to share with other code. To consume it, you then import it into your existing application. You import specific values, or you can use a star to import all of them. You can import them into a particular namespace, essentially. Um, you can leave this part out too, it doesn't have to have the as, and then you can import them from any file that you want. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty powerful. There's also the introduction of things like template strings. So if you're coming from something like Ruby, you are probably very familiar with these. They essentially let you go and embed code inside of strings. It's a simple change, but it's one that can save quite a bit of typing pluses. There's also no more need for variable hoisting or creating immediately invoked function expressions or ifies. Um, so, just a quick refresher for those of you that might not be familiar with it. Hoisting is what happens when you accidentally declare a variable in the global scope or go and declare a variable without the var keyword in a function. In both these cases, you end up with variables in the global namespace that you may not want to share outside of your function or library. This is very easy to do and happens in very confusing ways often. With ECMAScript 6, you can completely avoid this. Instead of having to use an immediately invoked function expression like I do here, you can simply use the let keyword. This will automatically restrict values to the blocks that are defined in. So for example, to a specific function or even a block in an if, while, or other loop. There's lots more things in ECMAScript 6, which I'm not going to talk about today. But I encourage you to look into it more and find out about it yourself. In future talks, I'll be exploring some of these in more detail and talking about the features I didn't talk about today, as well as how you can get started using ECMAScript 6 in your existing applications today. Thank you very much, and please send questions to Mark Bennett on Twitter. Thank you very much.